So I don't know if I'm going to be able to show you all this or not. Let's see if we can get the light on down in there. But if y'all can see, there we go. Look down at the bottom of that tank. There's a decent amount of rust. This tank is set up for a while. I'm sure it's had some moisture in it. And instead of just scrapping it, we're going to do our best to see if we can get that out. But I want to get you a good before look. And let's see what kind of difference we can make on the after. Now, you can't really see. The walls actually look really good. I don't hardly see much rust on... Actually, I don't really see much of any rust on the walls. Of maybe just a very light little bit. It's all in the bottom. So at one point in time, this probably had some rainwater collect in it. Now, it's also got a drain over here on this side. So we can clean out whatever we put in it. So it just so happens I have some very, and I mean very strong vinegar that I was going to use for another project that a friend brought to me, but I think this is going to be the perfect application for it. So long story short, if you look online for cleaning rust out of fuel tanks, a very popular method and a very affordable method is to use vinegar, and it seems to work quite well. However, I haven't really seen any videos or anything online of people cleaning out a tank this big. So here's the thing, most people are using your typical vinegar that you get from the store. I think it's like a three, four, maybe 5% acidity. It's very low. It's just the white vinegar that we're all used to. So this top right here, I actually got from a farming store. And this is like 21 or 22%. Very, very, very strong vinegar. So I'm gonna keep an eye on this, but this should do an excellent job removing that rust. I just don't wanna make sure there's any additional damage going on in there. And we may even try to thin this down some or dilute it some with a little bit of water, but I'm gonna try straight vinegar and see the reaction that's going on. So I've got several gallons of this stuff right here. Long story short, we're gonna pour it in here. I'm gonna let it sit on the bottom floor for a while since that's where the majority of the rust is. And then over the next day or so, I'm gonna tip the tank this way, coat the sidewall, tip the tank this way, coat this front wall, and kind of flip it all around. Then what we'll do, pull that drain, I'll wash it out, and then we'll set up a fan system to actually dry the inside of this tank out. By then, we should be ready to do a little bit of welding on it, and we're gonna go try to fill it as quick as possible so it doesn't wind up getting surface rust on it again. So this is gonna take a few days to complete. Let's get started. All right, so I've had this tank soaking for several days now with that vinegar, and I can already tell you, while the bottom still has a lot of rust in it, things look gummy, things look loose now. And where this was sitting against the sidewall, it's clear. And what I've been doing is flipping the tank around over the last few days and kind of letting the vinegar sit everywhere. I have a feeling what I'm gonna need to do is fire up this pressure washer and blast this stuff out. So are y'all ready to see something amazing? Does vinegar work for cleaning out a tank? Oh, you bet. It must have released all the rust. It almost looks like a brand new tank in there. Check this out. Look at how shiny everything is. The bottom, all that stuff. Now there is some staining and other stuff going on. But look at these walls. That was all jet black and just coated with junk and the whole bottom was coated in just huge chunks of rust that looks amazing all right so what i have going on here i have a very powerful computer fan left over from another project and it's got a diffuser on there and it happens to fit perfectly over this and i'm going to tape it to the tank so it's forcing all air in there but it's already blowing quite a bit out and i'm probably going to run this overnight to completely dry this tank out just constantly put air through so let's get this taped up and then tomorrow what i can do is put a few gallons of diesel in this tank slosh it all around to wash out any potential leftover water or a little bit of rust and that diesel will also give the walls a nice good coating so the good thing about what all i just done is there is no potential for any explosive atmosphere in here i have 
cleaned everything out with the vinegar. There is not a drop of diesel potentially left anywhere in this tank. So I'll probably weld everything up first and then slosh the diesel around like I was talking about to coat and get the last of everything out. But right now it's safe to do the welding that I want to do on it. Uh, and again, nothing's gonna blow up on me. All right, so now the plan is, I have been saving about five gallons of diesel right here. I'm gonna put this diesel in here, go drive the tractor around, slosh it all in the tank, try to keep that at an angle so I'll wash any residual, anything left over for this back drain. And I may even flip this upside down and just really get everything coated and washed out good. But ultimately what I'm trying to do is do a final rinse of, even though the tank's dry now because we're in the fans, a final rinse of any potential uh, vinegar that could be in there. There's still probably a few specks of rust and stuff here and there. And I want to rinse it out and coat it with the diesel before I go fill up because I don't want anything that could be in there that I can't see making it to my filter system and ultimately to my track. Now I trust that filter I'm going to put on to stop chunks of rust and things like that. What I don't really want is any residual vinegar or, any, or water that may be trapped in the corners. Don't want that leftover potentially making it to my track.
All right, so we have this project pretty well wrapped up, minus testing this out with some fuel, which we're gonna do in this episode. We need to check for leaks to see how good this pump works. But as y'all can see, I decided to go with the Feel Right 5200 series piston pump. This is a very highly rated pump. Not cheap either. Feel Right makes some really good equipment, but you pay for quality. Now the reason I decided to go with this piston pump is it moves plenty of fuel for my tractor. If I was filling large equipment like excavators and just had a land clearing business or something like that, I would have splurged and went for an even more expensive 12 volt pump that'll move even more. Now keep in mind, this pump right here, even says right here on the side, it'll move up to 20 gallons with 100 strokes. Well, I'm typically filling my tractor up when I only need about five to eight gallons, so it doesn't take many strokes. So this direction will pump out. When I push it back, it also pumps again. So it pumps on two different strokes here. It'll move plenty of fuel for my needs. And I wanted to avoid having to run batteries, um, wiring, everything else, and vehicles to set up a 12 volt pump. So what I did right here is now this can go from truck to truck. I have two older trucks. It's probably gonna live in one that stays under the barn. And uh, I think it's gonna be a perfect fit. So nothing fancy. It does have a little nozzle that'll go in my tank and it has a catch on it to keep it from shooting out. I'm planning on setting the truck up in the barn to where I can pull the tractor right beside it like this, stick it in the back, pump, actually hold on to the hose and eyeball and see whenever I fill my tank up. So the beautiful thing about this setup is, and one reason I didn't mind painting it black and having it the way that it is, my truck stays under the barn 100% of the time, unless I'm going to get diesel or towing something with it. I have a very old, I've had this truck forever, an old 2500 series truck. So my diesel tank's gonna stay out, you know, in the shade under a barn. That should really help with uh, the, the longevity of the fuel, any potential buildup on the inside, um, and this tank getting super hot. I love this. I added the filter. The pump does not come with a filter system. They should. If you're going to run a diesel pump, you need to run a filter. There is really bad what we call algae buildup in our diesel down here in the south. I don't know if y'all see it everywhere else across the country, but really what it is, I think it's an actual bacteria that can survive in fuel. It's crazy, but we call it algae. It looks like flakes of floating black algae in the tank. So anytime you fill up a five gallon can down here, you see that stuff floating around everywhere. And I've actually had it plug up fuel lines before it gets to the filters on my system. And so has my father and his tractor. And then you have to empty the tank, clean that junk out. So I've been super excited about going to an actual filter right here. This will filter more than what this will pump. And this should catch all that floating particulate that we get in our diesels down here. I also decided to go with the fill right vented fill cap. So that pops right out. It gives me the venting that I need to be able to pump out. Air must always follow into a tank when fluid's leaving it, or otherwise it just won't work. It had an old flammable sticker on here. I taped it up and cut some painter's tape around, painted everything, and it worked out perfect. So what I'm accomplishing back here is, since I don't run toolboxes in my truck, I wanted this right here. It would normally be around this way and under a toolbox. Well, this will go against the back wall of my truck now and look at all the storage space that I have since I welded this rack on here. I just had a bunch of scrap metal around and it worked out perfectly. I always keep buckets in the back of my truck for trash or holding chains or straps and now I can just throw several buckets up there, straps, everything else, and it keeps my hose from flopping all around the truck. So I really, really like but uh, I added that little rack to it right there. Like I said, it was just a bunch of scrap steel that was laying around anyways. All right, well, it's really late in the day. I'll see y'all back in the morning. We're gonna go fill this up. Ouch, that is gonna hurt with the price of diesel. And then we're gonna run this pump and see how well it works. So I'm pulling off from the fuel station right now and I had just stopped. I did not fill the tank up. I was very curious how much it would hold. 
because I can't remember if I mentioned this video. This tank was given to me by a friend and viewer. I don't know if y'all watched that episode, but his name's Casey Henderson. I appreciate him giving me this tank. It was homemade. I just kind of modified it to my needs. But I wound up putting 60 gallons in there. It cost me $324. This is off-road diesel, so it's not road taxed here in Florida. And that hurt enough, $324. I took a peek down in the tank. I still got that much room to come all the way up the top. I, I don't know, I'm gonna guess this tank probably holds 70 to 75 gallons. Now 60 gallons in it, that's more than enough. Uh, didn't see any leaks and I mainly wanted to get it mostly full to kind of help with fuel quality issues, any moisture buildup, condensation, and I wanna make sure I've got enough fuel in there that as I ride around, it is now gonna splash and coat all walls, the top, and uh, leave that nice kind of oily film over it to protect the metal since we stripped it and cleaned it. I don't want any surface rust build up on there, but, oh, ouch, I'm so ready for uh, fuel to go back down to where it really needs to go. But with that said, I now have 60 gallons of fuel back there. What I'll do is probably use 20 to 30 gallons of it at a time, and as I occasionally run over to the store to pick up, you know, lawn mowing gas and things like that. I've already got the fuel tank in the truck and I'll just start hitting it with another 20 to 30 gallons. And I'll probably always keep it mostly full uh, to, to keep the, the fuel good. All right, so moment of truth. Let's see how well this right here works. I have no idea if this pump needs to be primed up or if it'll prime itself i probably should have read the instructions all right so it looks like this hose i can get it to catch in there easily let's get to pumping now you're going to notice this tank's quite high my truck is jacked up it's got a several inch lift and i'm on mud tires so yeah this thing has it's about as high as it needs to be um also this tank was just a little shy of fitting in this particular truck behind the fender wells. This was made for a different truck, but I put it up on blocks as well. So I can also, so it fit and I can come here with my tractor forks and take this in and out if I need to go pick up pallets or anything else. So that has a, an additional three and a half inches higher than it really needs to be, but it'll make it come out nice and easy. Uh Oh, here's something. There it is. So as you can see, I can get a continuous flow. Look at that. Because this pump puts out on both the stroke and push, it's a continuous flow. I thought it was gonna surge, but not at all. This thing puts out way more than I was expecting. That's awesome. Check this out. I'm gonna try not to splash fuel everywhere, but here's the stroke, here's the push. Oh, I'm getting it everywhere. But as you can see, I can keep a steady stream. That's pretty impressive. And this pump is not hard to uh, actuate either. I think it's perfect. Now I don't have to fool with any electric pumps, any wiring, nothing. My tractor is quite low, less than a quarter of a tank. So let's see how long it takes to fill this up. And I love that I'm running through a filter too. Let's see what kind of progress we've made. Oh, wow. Oh, what is that? <laughs> I guess the pump actually has a pressure relief valve too. Wow, we're already almost full, y'all. That's crazy. Plenty fast enough. And I don't want to get this slapped to the top. That was awesome. That was so awesome. I've actually got a fuel station for my diesel now. So I guess now the real question is, what do I do with this hose? Yeah, it did have some run out after the fact, so I don't know if there's a way I need to let it go back in or hold the hose up to drain it all out, but it didn't seem to quickly siphon back into the tank. So this, that's something I'll have to figure out for the future. But I think since I have some spare buckets left around from painting the house, what I'll start doing, since I have all this room back here now for buckets, Look there, nice storage out of the way. I'll just curl the hose up, put it in the bucket, 
That way if any diesel drips all out, it's getting in the bucket, not in my truck. And then I've got me another bucket over here that I keep for my trash bucket. I keep extra reese hitches back in here now, things like that. What I'll probably wind up doing is putting a rubber mat back in here so I don't eventually scratch through rust or potentially beat through the metal on this tank. So here we are. One last look. You can look at the cargo area, the tank itself, and the pump set up over there. I've got plenty of room for storage back there. And the tank can be removed if need be. So you can see I have it up on four by four, several of them in there to support it. Tractor forks underneath, pull it right out. All right, well, hopefully y'all enjoyed this whole project. Again, Casey, thank you so much for donating me this uh, tank. He got me motivated to go ahead and finish up a project I've been wanting to do for a couple of years and invest in what feels like a good quality pump. I forgot to mention this pump also, I don't want to push on it too hard, has a locking mechanism right there. So you can put a latch through and lock if you don't want nobody to steal your diesel or if you don't want this to fall down going down the road, for example. I think that's another good reason to keep the hose in the bucket. So should a limb catch this or a kid or somebody pull on and actually start pumping diesel, at least it's going in a bucket now and nowhere else in the truck. So thank y'all so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode. We'll catch you on the next one. Mm -hmm.